Hello, welcome everybody. I think we started. Yes, I see some folks joining. Uh, we are going to get started shortly, but I want to give everybody some time to trickle in from the waiting room. Welcome, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us for today's presentation class for beginners. What is class and how to do it? And we're really excited to have you here at Teachdown. We're all about interactions. So if you don't mind as you're joining, please let us know where you're joining from. Drop a chat in the chat box. You'll see that down below we're using Zoom and I think many of us are familiar, but if you haven't used Zoom, there's two boxes, a chat box and a Q&A box. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but a quick reminder as you drop in and let us know where you're joining from. Hello in Houston and California and Phoenix and Georgia and Pasadena and Kalamazoo and oh my gosh, it's going so fast. But um, just to let you know, uh, today's presentation is being recorded. Your mic is off and your video is off. So don't stress if you have to run and grab some water or leave early. It's okay. We'll send you the recording tomorrow along with the slides and any additional resources that may come up in today's presentation. I mentioned the chat box and it's already a flurry with everybody letting us know where they're coming from, but we also have a Q&A box, which you can use to submit private questions to Erin, our, present, our presenter today. And um, that's the best place if you have a question related to the presentation that you really want us to address. The Q&A box is the best place for it because as you can see, the chat box is wild. So um, it's just easier for us to track the questions that we have asked and have not yet answered. Um, so we're all, we're very glad everybody's here today. Um, as you may know, this is an overview of the class system, the classroom assessment scoring system. Today, we'll talk through what class is, what it looks like, and Erin will lead us through some sample pathways for educators, observers, coaches, and leaders. And, oh, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce Erin. Erin's going to walk us through everything. Erin's been at Teachstone for say, six years, six years. I always want to say seven. Um, and is an account executive here at Teachstone. Erin leads all of our wonderful presentations on class and CDA with class and my Teachstone. And you've probably seen her at some of the many conferences we have. If you were at NHSA, you may have seen her there. Um, lots and lots of things around the field. So big shout out to Erin. I know you're like a celebrity, so we're really excited to have you here today. Welcome. Thank you, Megan. Excited to be here. Um, also interested in the chat to see if any of y'all were at NHSA and if I or any of my wonderful colleagues had the opportunity to meet you. Um, so thank you for introducing me, Megan. I have been, I, I have a yes, we met. Um, I have I've been with Teachstone for six years, as Megan said. My background previously, I, I worked with kids. I also worked doing more um, like customer experience type stuff love the class tool, find it to be exactly what I essentially thought best practice was before, but now we've got the research to back it up. Um, so I love all of this. Hope you all share my passion and excitement as we work through this today. So first I want to uh, just take a moment and stop and reflect. Who was your favorite teacher growing up? And if you can put that in the chat, but also explain a little bit about why were they your favorite teacher? I have a, I have a feeling we are gonna see some of the same themes as far as why folks' as favorite teacher was who they were. Um, I tend to alternate between two different teachers when, when I ask this question. So the one I'm gonna do today is uh, I had a teacher in, I believe it was second grade math class and some kids uh, got in trouble for cheating on homework. And instead of everyone getting in trouble, instead um, our math teacher pivoted to, we had a courtroom. We had a judge, we had a jury, a prosecutor, all of that. And it was just such a fun, engaging experience. I don't remember what happened to the kids that were cheating. I don't know if they got in trouble or if it was just this fun learning experience. So I thought that was just a really cool way to go about it, that type of pivot and uh, just positive experience. So reading through some of these, um, let's see, positive leader, friendly and caring, articulate, 
patient and engaging, kind and made learning fun, supportive and made learning fun. So as expected, Megan, is there anything that, that you saw that kind of popped out at you as being unexpected? I see three, four, five people saying I felt loved, which like I just started tearing up. <laughs> I think that's just so important when you think about kids in the classroom, you want them to feel loved and safe and secure. That actually, I totally forgot that that math teacher I was just talking about, <clears throat> she invited all of us to her wedding and I attended her wedding that Aww, year. That's yeah. nice. So, yes. So yes, she did very much make me feel loved. And so I think, you know, if, if we're all um, thinking about that favorite teacher, I think most of us have that same sort of thought about it's, it's how they challenged us. It's a personal connection. It's how they helped us feel safe, how they helped us feel welcome. And that, that's what great teaching is. That's what class is. So class is designed to help every teacher change the lives of students through the power of interactions. And so we talk about how there could be just that one adult that can really change the trajectory of a child's life. And how do we get more of those one adults into the classrooms? So next, we're going to kick it over to the wonderful Dominique McCain. Um, this clip, I think, perfectly sums up what class is. So Dominique is formerly with Dallas ISD in Texas, and they have done and are continuing to do a large scale class implementation pre-K to third. Uh, last time I did this, I was informed by one of our colleagues that she is no longer with the next program I thought she was with, and she has actually changed again. And she's currently with a program called Educational First Steps in Texas. And so what they do is they take uh, low performing child care centers in communities with the greatest need, and they coach them, they mentor staff, educators, administrators, and transform them into nationally accredited, high quality early learning environments. So let's hear from Dominique. Now bear with me. I don't know if I shared my sound, so let's see if this comes through. I describe class as the power of an educator's job. So often educators are told the what of their job through a variety of evaluations and a variety of um, observations. But very seldomly does anyone get granular enough to help them understand immediate action they can take to transform what's happening in their classroom. Class does that from the domains down to the dimensions, down to the indicators, down to the behavioral markers. It teaches and gives a very clear path for educators of how to do their job. So to me, class is the how of an educator's job. There you go. <laughs> I love that. And I think that really describes class very well as far as there, there's so many things that are the what. What do you need to do? But how do you do all of those things is really what class is. And I, I just want to call out real quick. There are a couple that came through while that video was going. And I love these. I love reading all of these. So helped us all become better people, not only helped us educationally, but personally too, uh, challenged me in ways that many other teachers did not. I love that. And so that's, that's really what we're going for here. So class can be viewed as just an assessment tool, but it's, it's really so much more than that. So yes, we do the assessment, but it's a whole system. So how do you focus everybody on the importance of interactions? Then once everybody is kind of on the same page about the importance of those interactions and how they impact student outcomes, how do you measure those interactions? And the measurement can be for assessment, but also just as, as level setting of where are we? Where do we need to focus our improvement efforts? And then you do the improvement. And then you come back, you measure again. Where were we impactful? Where do we need to refocus? And you come back and you keep doing the measure and improve cycle. So we do have a single focus, interactions. Interactions are what we really feel the most important aspect of student outcomes are. And we think that has a big impact. So class is the most evidence-based and widely used continuous improvement system for teaching and early education. 
um, we're going to learn a little bit more about it here. So uh, if we're thinking about <clears throat> pre-K and up, so infant toddler have slightly different domains, but the same general concepts. These domains are for pre-K through uh, grade 12. We have emotional support, classroom organization, and instructional support. And so what I heard Bridget say at National Head Start, and I don't know if other folks that were there with me heard the same thing, when she gave her pop-up talk at the NHSA booth, she mentioned these domains, but she spoke about them in a different way. So we were just talking about what great teaching is. And Bridget mentioned that the definition, and for those of you um, unfamiliar when I'm saying Bridget, Bridget Hamry, uh, one of the authors of the class tool. So um, when she was talking about teaching, she said the definition of teaching, if you look it up, is something along the lines of telling people how to do something. And if we think about all of those conversations we just saw in the chat, they weren't about telling somebody how to do something. They were about how that teacher made us feel. So if we can go to the next slide here, the way that Bridget described it is we don't want folks to just tell you how to do something. We want educators to help kids feel connected, help them feel engaged, help them feel inspired to learn. And so if you look at this slide, you'll see that those are the three domains. Emotional support is how connected are the children. Classroom organization can be viewed as how engaged are the children. And then instructional support is how inspired are they to learn. And so again, we have, uh, so we do have two versions. I'll get into that in a little bit. So we have class 2008 and second edition, but regardless, it's the same goal and it's life-changing teaching. One interaction at a time, one teacher at a time. How can we really get that life-changing teaching into the lives of students? So those domains, thinking about them, research backs what we're doing. Emotional support, research demonstrates, provides all of these uh, various enhanced competencies. So the higher your emotional uh, support score, higher the social competence of the, of the students might be. Decreased conflict with teachers because they feel that trust and that bond. Fewer behavioral problems, again, because there's a relationship higher executive functioning skills, and higher achievement in language and literacy. When we have classroom organization. Oh, I was just going to add. I yeah, hope go, you mind. Go, go but it. Please do. Like an example of, of an interaction under emotional support would be, um, these are the kinds of interactions that help children feel safe and secure. So it could be Greeting them by name when they walk through the door it could be um, you quickly respond when you notice a child is feeling really frustrated in the classroom. Um, just kind of the being proactive in helping kids feel positive and and welcome and safe to come to school every day. And and a lot of this, I mean, it's not just teachers with kids. Like we have presentations on parallel process of coaches with teachers too, right? And like, it's the same way that I want to be treated just in everyday life. I'm going to work harder for people who are trusting in me, believing in me, and being mindful of things I might have going on outside of work. Mm -hmm. Similar thing with kids, except they don't have the emotional regulation skills that we as adults do. So it's going to impact them that much more if they don't feel that trust, if they don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, classroom organization. So this is, uh, I, I view it as like structure. How much structure and um, support are you providing in that way? Do you have the transitions uh, kind of already going? You have them planned in your mind and you have them organized. Do you have the next activity ready as you're having kids wrap up with one activity? Um, or do you have the next one already set up or a kid's kind of free floating around not knowing what to do? Uh, I have a two-year-old. I know how much that routine has uh, meant for him. He's a little 
too structured at this point. <laughs> After gymnastics yesterday, he was shutting the door as other people were trying to leave because when he leaves, he shuts the door. <laughs> so it's a little, a little too rigid sometimes, but uh, classroom organization is that structure so that kids know what to expect. They know what to anticipate. And that is aligned with uh, social emotional development. Fewer conflicts with teachers because the kids know what to expect. Decreased behavior problems and improved academic outcomes. What do you think, Megan? You have anything to add with that one? I was just going to say, it's almost like no surprise when your classroom runs like a well-oiled machine, you're making the most of every moment um, and just maximizing all of the academic opportunities. Um, I've seen videos of teachers who, while they're having the children line up, they're calling out, you know, today we're going to act like a rhinoceros. Like, how do we think a rhinoceros would act? R, R, everyone make an R sound. And it's like, at, you're using every single moment in that transition to continue the lesson. Um, and children already know what to expect as they're moving along to the next activity. Exactly. Yes. And uh, knowing what to expect about what you're doing as well. You're not just running out of the room, but you're preparing for the next sec uh, section here. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Um, so now that we have the uh, the safe feeling and the structure and the transitions, now the actual, the, the learning part, the instructional part. So this is where you're asking the um, back and forth questions. You're modeling language and you're having uh, the feedback loops. So as you do that and really engage their learning, their curiosity, that then is helping. Uh, so higher instructional support scores help with student outcomes. They show growth in language, literacy, and math, uh, executive functioning skills, greater behavioral competence. I think we've seen behavioral competence and social competence across all three domains here um, and increased social competence. So there's more than just the learning that we're doing here about academics. We're learning about life and how to emotionally regulate ourselves and interact with others. Yeah, I think of this one as like that deeper level thinking. It's not just echoing ABC. It could be understanding that those letters are the building blocks for words or, or you know, it's beyond A is for Apple, but like then going on and talking about apples and where they come from and just expanding on a lot of um, questions that kids have. If, and I have a four-year-old, so there are a bajillion questions every day in yes. my life. <laughs> yes. um, and I want to touch real quick on um, this question that came in. So Ooh, yeah. if being observed at the beginning of the year, uh, what is the impact on scores if the well-oiled machine hasn't been practiced yet because it's the beginning of the year? Um, great so, question. Thank you. Yes. Great question. Um, so there's a, there's a couple things with that. So ideally observations are taking place a couple weeks into the school year so that you've had the opportunity to make those connections with the children and uh, really get that routine in place and get everyone on the same page about how this well-oiled machine runs. Um, beginning of the year scores, and then we do end of the year scores as well, because remember we're getting that baseline, where can we focus professional development and then doing that professional development and then seeing how we've now uh, impacted. And then as you keep having those cycles year over year, if you're having those beginning of year scores, those beginning of year scores should increase over time because you're now getting that foundation of what do I really need to do to set the structure at the beginning of the year? What do you think, Megan? Anything to add to that? I think you, you nailed it. And I, well, I guess I would add every program or district is going to conduct their observations a little bit differently. That's great. You know, we uh, teach and want programs to be doing what works best for them. And I know you're going to talk more about how this system and the framework works. So maybe that's a nice segue, but I do see a lot of like beginning, like doing spring observations to then reflect back on how you've improved since the fall observations. Yes. All right. And so class framework. So we, we saw this a little bit already, the focus, measure, improve. Um, but so focusing is 
you want to focus your organization on the importance of effective interactions. If everyone's not on the same page about that, it is going to be more, more challenging to move forward uh, if everyone's not realizing how much these interactions truly matter with everything else you're doing. It's not another thing to add to your plate. It's really the foundational element that helps make everything else easier. Then we want to measure the quality of your program's interactions and do that on an ongoing basis. So we recommend formal observations at least twice a year, but also adding in some informal observations where maybe it's not the full 20 minute cycle or you're not doing multiple cycles or you're focused on a particular domain or dimension and just looking at specific behaviors. Then we want to improve. So we do the assessment, but we also then offer a variety of trainings and supports to really provide that, that <coughs> excuse me, that data-driven PD and coaching. <coughs> um, again, we say class is a system, no matter which version you choose. So some folks might be on class 2008, some may have already transitioned to second edition. Uh, this is for pre-K and K-3 specifically. We haven't made those adjustments to other age levels yet. If you're unsure what I'm referencing, feel free to reach out to a Teach Stone rep. Um, but so regardless of which one you're using, it's still a system, still focused on interactions, still the focus, measure, improve framework. And then we also have these observation supports that are on the dashboard of any currently certified observer. This can be for 2008 or second edition. So we've got these great free uh, observer supports. We have settings with dual language learners, reducing bias, and settings serving children with disabilities. So this is to frame your class lens when going into specific settings. So how does your class lens adjust if you're going into a special education classroom, if you're going into a classroom with dual language learners, what should you be looking for and mindful of in those interactions? So the focus stage, we know that there's a variety of different roles, different needs for folks to get up to speed and bought in. Um, and so we offer different supports for all of those different uh, the roles in levels within the organization. So when you focus, we want to build leader readiness. We want a clear vision of what is quality? What are we aiming for? We want to create excitement and buy-in. So I just mentioned that again, that excitement and buy-in and, and that, yes, this is, this is what is important, really helps drive the improvement and, and the success of implementation. And then increase confidence and support in starting this improvement journey. And remember, even Olympic athletes get coached. So coaching isn't necessarily you're doing something bad, you're doing something wrong. It's just to help you be more intentional and to just always be improving wherever you can be. So some examples of supports that we have to build leader readiness is we have a class primer for leaders uh, online course. It's two hours, um, highly recommend. It's age level neutral, really helps explain the importance of interactions and then how you can take this class data to then inf uh, inform the professional development that you're doing within your program. It's a great start. Uh, class community, you're gonna see this referenced a few times. If you're not already in our class community, you can request to join. Uh, you don't have to have gone through any of our class trainings or anything. It's a free community uh, to connect with class users throughout the country, throughout the world. Other Head Start users, other users within your state, whatever kind of your program specifics are, you can connect with others. Uh, educators, you can look, you can connect with other educators and see uh, different tips and suggestions that they have administrators. You can connect with other folks who have been through a situation. Don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can learn from others. Uh, you can get that buy-in and excitement from our class learning community. Also, class primer for teachers, for educators. This is uh, a 
We have an online asynchronous course. We also have a facilitated training. Our facilitated trainings for groups can be done on Zoom or face-to-face. -face. So we have a variety of options there. Custom events. This is a newer one that I really, really love. So with custom events, you can really build your own. We have like a menu of different uh, courses and, and training options. And you can build a menu and you can either have maybe a one day event, a, se a learning series. You can support educators. You can support coaches, various age levels, different languages, uh, and really customize what this learning experience is for your program. And they're short bite-sized chunks. Uh, we have curricula crosswalks because again, you know, class is the foundational aspect. It's not just another thing. So we have different curriculums that are being used with class um, and various other kind of classroom um, services that are used that align with class and how do they align so that you're not siloing these things, but rather bringing them together into a cohesive experience. Increasing confidence. We have a video library, so you can watch actual classroom footage and see what these experiences, these really exemplar experiences, as well as some with opportunities for some growth, what do they look like? We have class support resources. Um, so we have the uh, dictionaries. So we have class dictionaries, we have class strategy cards. And a big hit at National Head Start was uh, our class support kits. So we have uh, classroom materials that you can purchase for infant toddler classrooms, for pre-K classrooms, and we also have one that, uh, for parents. And then again, that class community, because it really is just a great place to connect and just ask others questions, learn from questions others are asking and their responses. And you can connect with our class, uh, with our TeachStone team through the community as well. Do we have any questions right now, Megan? Takes me a minute to get off mute and video. <laughs> yes, we have a few questions. Um, this question goes back to a previous slide that you were talking about on the two versions. And uh, thank you, Martina, for this question. Is, is the 2008 version still up to date? And the answer is yes. Yeah, you can be using either um, class second edition came out last year. And so many people are still on 2008 and that's totally fine. And all or most of the programs that Aaron's talking about um, are applicable to both versions. Anything you'd add to that, Aaron? Um, yeah, if, if you're not familiar with the transition, um, we have other webinars on it and you can certainly poke around the website, but long story short, the, trans, uh, the transition to second edition is We've taken a lot of feedback from various programs on ways that we can be more inclusive and put that into the new edition. So it's just more, um, I mean, it's 2008 was what, 15 years ago at this point, I had to do the math, um, 15 years ago at this point. So, you know, just, it's an upgraded version. Uh, so just with some feedback that we've heard really being brought into the mix here, and we have a crosswalk we can share and things like that. Just reach out to uh, Teach Stone and we can definitely help you out with that. Ooh, I'll drop that in in just a second. Thank you. Um, so then we talked about measure. So when we measure, what are we measuring for? So we're monitoring program quality. We can also be monitoring individual quality and then that improvement. So as we do the improvement, the improve aspects, how are we progressing? Collect that data and then report on it, whether you're reporting on it um, for funders, for state QRIS, for just internal purposes, for professional development, whatever that is, you wanna be able to collect that data and provide reports that track the quality and the improvement. And then maintain data confidence and reliability. So how do you make sure that this data that you're collecting is actually valid? How do you make sure that your observers are observing with reliability? 
so for monitoring program quality, we have class observation training where you become a certified class observer on any of the age levels that we have. We have infant through grade 12, um, and you go through the training, take the test and become certified. Once you become certified, there's two different paths that you can take as far as additional uh, kind of options here, one of which is to be a trainer. So becoming a trainer, you can then do observation training within your program. So you're building up that class uh, in-house sustainability by having somebody in your program who can deliver introduction to the class tool, as well as class observation training to build up your capacity. I'll mention the other pathway a little bit later. Um, collecting data, we have a My Teach Stone class subscription. They, one of the modules is the measurement and reporting suite. Uh, you may have seen a demo that I've done on that as well. With that, it's a place to store your data. You can track it over time. You can do reporting on classroom basis, a site level, a city, a county, a, you know, however, however many layers you need to report on. You can dive as deep or go as broad as needed. And then you can create automatically generated reports. Instead of having to manually type all of that up, you can create that right within the platform. And then maintaining reliability. So that is important because you want to know that these scores that you're getting are actually the, the scores that you're looking, um, the actual reliable data. So if your scores are way off, then you may not actually be knowing where to be focusing. You may think that there's been less improvement than there really has been. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're keeping those reliable observers. We do that, first of all, they have to recertify every year, but there's also calibrations. So that would be where you just kind of watch a video in between recertification period to recalibrate and make sure that you're still reliable. It's especially used um, in programs that are doing more high stakes data and need to make sure that they're reliable at various times throughout the year. We have double coding. Um, and so I was just talking to a program about this at National Head Start. And one of the things about double coding is that this is where, so we send a class master specialist out to your program to code alongside one of your observers. And so what was brought uh, was brought up with this was it's so different to watch a video than to code live in a classroom. And so a calibration and a recertification are going to be the, the video footage, but being able to have somebody alongside you in a live classroom, coding together, getting feedback. Did you see this? Did you see that? Uh, and so double coding is a great option for that. And then I already went over our observer support series. We have those three great free courses on your dashboard if you're a currently certified observer. And before we jump into improve, I think this is a nice um, place to layer in Lisa's question. Do you receive a written synopsis of your observation so that you can have notes to refer to? Um, I think Lisa's referring to you as a teacher um, when your classroom is being uh, observed. So great question. And unfortunately, not a simple yes or no answer. Or uh, So essentially, different programs have different processes. So it depends on what your specific program's process is. Some folks, the, uh, the observer delivers feedback right after the observation. Others, the observer provides feedback to your administrator who passes it to a coach who passes it to you. Uh, there's all different kinds of ways that this could be done. So there's not really a one size fits all answer to that, unfortunately. Any other questions before we move on? I have some questions. I'm going to sit on them just looking at them. Um, okay. I'm going to sit on these until we get to the end. Okay, absolutely. All right, so then we have the improve stage. So when we improve, we wanna be strengthening the program quality and we're using data-driven professional development. So we're not just kind of arbitrarily doing professional development, but how do we use the data that we just took 
the observations and use that to inform what our next steps are. Increase coaching capacity. So how do we grow our coaching support as well as the effectiveness of our coaches? And then also supporting individual educator development and growth. So not just programmatic, but how do you hone in on individual educators and what their goals are? So we have class PD training um, that we can do to strengthen program quality. These are things like we have an online course called Class Foundations. Uh, we have um, some powered by Class PD, which is where it's interactions based, but not necessarily class specific, such as interactions at the heart of healing, which is uh, a trauma informed work. So interactions are especially important with trauma, but it's not directly class specific. Similarly, banking time, how do we maximize our interactions with the kids who need it most? How do we have focused time with those kids who need that additional support? Again, it's interactions based, not class specific. How do we increase the capacity? Uh, so we have, I mentioned that there are two pathways from being an observer. You can be a trainer, you can go and become a coach. So we have coaching certifications where you can be a certified class group coach where you deliver our group coaching model, or you can be a certified one-on-one -on -one, uh, video coach. Both of these are um, ones where you are trained by TeachStone to deliver the coaching model. You go back to your program and you deliver it, but at the same time, you're also receiving coaching from a TeachStone class specialist. So you're really increasing not only the capacity, but also the effectiveness of coaches. We have coaching professional development. So uh, instructional support strategies for coaches, for example. How do you really provide strategies to your educators on that challenging instructional support domain? Feedback strategies. How do you give effective feedback to educators? So that goes back to that question about the report. It's it's not something that is the same across all programs, but how do we do a classy feedback where it's really reflective of what the class tool is for that parallel process? Coaching services. So we have some options where we would do the coaching directly. So if you don't yet have that coaching capacity, but you need coaching, reach out to TeachStone and we have a couple offerings that we can provide where our class specialists are delivering coaching to your educators. Individual educator development and growth. So my TeachStone, the class subscription, we mentioned the observation portion. We also have the learning resources portion. So how do you take that data, use it, find the learning resources that can really maximize learning? Within here, you can be sharing to individual educators. You can create groups to share with. And we've done a lot of what I call the homework before the homework um, so that you can really maximize the coaching relationship. We've uh, filtered all sorts of different topics by domain, by dimension, reflective questions, call out specific areas to look for as being great interactions or opportunities for growth. Um, so super, super supportive uh, platform there. And then online PD courses. So that's things like uh, we have our CDA with class, which was also a big hit at National Head Start. Um, so we have a lot of really, really great options. Got a couple more questions. Can I interrupt right. you here? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, Lorraine had asked how um, we can find more information about becoming a certified coach. I dropped that in the chat, but Erin, anything you want to add about the coaching certifications? We've got um, group coaching, one-on-one -on -one video coaching, and class master coaching. Yes. And so um, class master coaching is more about coaching competencies. Um, class group coaching is uh, you you have cohorts of educators that you're delivering coaching to as a group. Um, so it's kind of, it's more generalized, but there's also um, like take home assignments. So like you go back to the classroom, practice what you just did, come back, discuss how it went. 
uh, one-on-one -on -one video coaching is one-on-one, -on -one, so it's more individualized, highly, highly intensive. The, the educator is going to record themselves in the classroom and then provide that video to the coach. The coach is going to edit it down to be a short video clip and then provide direct feedback where the educator can, and it's strengths-based, so provide direct feedback on where the, the educator was really just doing a fantastic job and focus on that so that they see these are the moments that I just need to be more intentional about having more of these moments. Okay. I so a little finger crazy. Sorry about that. <laughs> you're fine. Uh, any other questions before we go to this? Uh, we have some questions about um, becoming a trainer and what that looks like, but I think we'll probably get to that later. Let's, uh, um, if we don't mind, there's only 20 minutes left. So let's get through um, maybe a couple of these pathways because I think that will answer some of the questions we have in the chat here. But folks, awesome. please keep your questions coming in the Q&A is the easiest place for me to keep tabs on what's been asked and I'm trying to chat in too. Awesome. Thank you, Megan. Um, so now we have that focus, measure, and improve framework, but what does this look like for various roles? So educator pathway. So you'll see it's kind of color-coded. So the first two are focus. So how do we focus educators? We want them to learn about class and about what quality interactions are. We want them to see quality interactions in real classrooms. So with that, we have our class primer for teachers that we mentioned. There's videos within that talking about the importance of interactions. Our... Um, my Teach Stone video resources that we have, see those quality interactions in the real classrooms and get them excited about like, this is, I do that. This is exactly what I already do. This is, this is easy, right? And then you do the observation. They're, they could be formally observed, informally observed, but just go in and it's, it's not to have a gotcha moment unless if that gotcha is I gotcha doing that fantastic thing, right? That was, that was cheesy. That was cheesy, <laughs> but, but it's to, it's to catch you doing really positive things and to be more intentional about those positive interactions. And then now that we have the observations, then we move to the improvement. So engage in needs-based program-wide PD. So that's when we do the programmatic, this is what our whole program could really benefit from receive ongoing data-driven coaching. So this could be more individualized. What do you as an individual educator really need? Both what do you want as well as what does the data say um, we can focus on? And then you can also strengthen your knowledge with self-study opportunities, uh, poking around conversations in the class learning community, listening to our podcasts, um, if you have access to the My Teach Stone platform, you can do self-study within there and you have all of the supports. A coaching pathway. So again, to focus, you want to see what are quality interactions. So you're going to have coaches viewing these quality interactions, whether it's our video resources, whether it's in observation training or the coach training that they go through, whether it's in the My Teach Stone learning resources, um, but those, the videos of what does this actually look like really help focus. Then they're going to learn about the class observation and scoring process. That is a prerequisite to, uh, to be one of our certified class coaches. So that's on the pathway here. You learn about the observation and scoring process and you view the classroom reports to drive coaching efforts. So just knowing about class isn't super helpful if you don't actually have the data. So you take the data, use that to inform the professional development that you're then doing. You can receive a coaching certificate or training, which we've discussed a little bit. To do so, uh, you would just get in contact with your TeachStone representative and we would walk you through that. And then whether you're a certified class coach or uh, just providing coaching within your program otherwise, you're going to provide that ongoing data-driven coaching to individuals as well as to uh, the program as a whole. 
and assign those individualized learning opportunities. So look at the data that you, uh, the classroom reports that we were looking at, and now how do you assign the individualized opportunities to the educators? Observer pathway. So this is thinking specifically about being an observer. So we mentioned that you can go from being an observer to a coach, go from being an observer to a trainer, but this is specifically just as an observer, you're gonna start off by exploring quality interactions. This is part of the observation training. And then you're gonna earn your observer certification. So you're gonna go through the training. You're going to take the testing, become certified, go out and do the observations, collect the data, report on the data. And then the improved part is what we were talking about with how do you stay reliable? How do you maintain that data integrity? How do you strengthen your validity? And then how do you just increase your overall skills and confidence? And that's with the calibrations, the double coding, uh, and just practicing the, the scores and making sure that you're staying on top of reliability. And then a leader pathway. So a leader, can be an observer, but you don't have to be. Um, it's more so how are you supporting those who are implementing class within your program? So learn about class and how do you prepare for the implementation? How do you support those who are going to be doing the observations, doing the coaching, being observed? Create that buy-in and introduce class. Get folks excited about what's to come with these observations. Build capacity for the observations. So how do you get your folks trained to deliver the observations? How do you get ob observers from your local community? How do you get these observations actually done? And then review the quality of those interactions based on the observations, informal or formal. And again, use that data to inform your uh, improvement efforts. So if you need to have more coaches, if you need to focus on specific areas. And then once you've really uh, figured out your implementation process, whether it's on a, a single age level or a single site or however you start off, now how do you expand the implementation? And then how do you expand the impact by diving deeper? I think this is a good place to weave in one of the questions. Um, we have a question from Martina, how can work bring coaches into their classroom. Um, and it, I brought it up here because it seems like it's a, a, uh, something that a leader would choose to invest in from Teachstone. Um, and I feel like that probably would fall under this like build capacity section. Is that what maybe you would add, Erin? Uh, I would say it would fall under the use data to inform um, improvement oh, yeah. efforts, but right. yeah, it's so, <laughs> so if you, if you don't have your own coaches, um, and you want to have direct coaching from TeachStone, that's something, again, we'll provide information on how to reach out to, uh, your direct point of contact here. Every program has a direct point of contact. Uh, so we would get you connected with that person to figure out which of our direct coaching services would be the best option for you based on what your need is, what your capacity is, what our capacity is, um, and then talk through that. But it is, um, it requires a conversation with one of our reps and make sure that we're providing you what the best option truly is. Yes. And I should have asked this before on the observer slide, but I think this is another relevant question. Um, from an anonymous attendee, if you're already reliable as an observer and you want to observe for other facilities, how would you do that? Uh, so you would just market yourself essentially. Um, so we do have an observer directory within the class learning community that is for anybody who is open and willing to uh, contract out to do observations. And then if you are, if somebody calls you up and asks if they can, uh, if you can support with their observations, y'all would negotiate that. However, um, Teachstone wouldn't be part of that. So it would just be whether you do an hourly rate, your consulting fee per cycle, however it is, because we do get that question a lot. How should we charge? That's 
between the observer and the program to kind of negotiate what that would look like. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go back to one other question too, and I'll move the slides forward as I ask it. But um, let's see, Christina asked about samples for giving feedback to teachers, brought it up because the class learning community that I dropped the link in for does have some of those feedback um, sheets that other coaches are using when they're providing feedback to their teachers. Um, if you go, I think it's under the resources section, or you can just use the search bar at the top. And um, quick reminder, the CLC, the class learning community, is free for anybody to join. And great call out for that one, because that's exactly what I was saying earlier about not needing to reinvent the wheel. There's people out there who have been doing class for years and years and years and have developed their own supports uh, worked with us to develop supports, things like that. So great resource to find um, some some options like that, some templates and whatnot. Um, this is just to reiterate what we've been saying. Class is more than an assessment tool. Um, we're not just trying to get scores and move along, but how do we actually improve these student outcomes? The student outcomes are the North Star. How do we find out how the interactions are driving those outcomes and how do we improve those interactions. And we do also have a couple of uh, great options to extend the power of interactions. So recently we rolled out, recently within the past year or so, um, maybe like eight to 10 months, uh, we rolled out class environment. So class environment is not a standalone uh, observation, but rather a supplement to a class observation, 2008 or second edition. And it's on how is the environment in your classroom? How is the way that the room is set up? How is that impacting your interactions? Um, so again, reach out to your rep for that. Uh, how do you bolster your workforce? So we have our CDA with class. Uh, you can catch one of our previously recorded CDA with class webinars on the website as well. Uh, but we have infant toddler CDA with class. We have pre-K. Um, really, really great coursework there. We also help you to engage families. So we have a meaningful interactions at home uh, facilitated uh, workshop that we would do, a Zoom workshop with uh, parents of your students. We also have a class literacy at home kit that empowers parents to do some of that literacy work at home and support with um, the, the learning process of their children. We just got two questions that fit in perfectly. It's like you are anticipating the next slides. I love it. Um, we've got two questions about teachers and what are the best trainings for teachers. And I was was going to type in, but that was a great opportunity to kind of plug the CDA with class because I there's a lot of educators whose programs might not be using class, but they want to keep that emphasis on interactions. And I am doing my best to keep up with all the link dropping, but Erin, if you can talk a little bit more about CDA for class um, for educators, and I'll find that link. Yeah, absolutely. So um, CDA credential is required in some areas if you don't have uh, an associates or a bachelor's or, you know, depending on what your credentialing requirements are. Um, so we don't provide the CDA credential. That's always done through the Council for Professional Recognition, but we're providing the 120 clock hours. Um, and so just some of the quick points that I touch on in the webinar, um, it's a birth to five coursework. So the same coursework can be applied for your infant toddler or your pre-K uh, application to the council. Um, it's very uh, mobile responsive. You can do it on a cell phone, a tablet, a computer. There's no specific times that you need to be available. So it's not like you have to be available on a specific night at a specific time, even for a facilitated version. We have on-demand and facilitated options, CEU and college credit renewal. And then of course, the cherry on top is that you are embedding class and the importance of interactions right into the foundational learning. So you're not teaching class down the road, you're not siloing class from child development, but really these interactions are what drive child, uh, child development. Anything you want to add to that, Megan? 
Uh, mm, no, but gen, like generally, we got a question about is this training going to be available through email? And yes, so we're going to send you the recording and we'll send you the uh, slides tomorrow um, through email. Oop. Maybe there's other questions, but I, I don't know if you had anything to add for this slide. <clears throat> um, so just that the, the, the first step, like I recommend reaching out to uh, your class point of contact as well. But the first step that we generally recommend um, is if you're a leader, you can get started with our class primer for leaders. It's an online two hour course. If you're a leader and want to support your educators, or if you're a teacher, we have the online class primer for teachers that teachers can go through. We also have, if you're a leader, you can gather your teachers together for a facilitated class primer for teachers training. So that's really the first step to, to dive a little bit deeper into these interactions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whew. I feel like we answer a lot of questions throughout, but I do want to pause and give everybody a chance. If I missed your questions in the chat, oh, yay. I already see some people have already registered for Primer, which is nice. Um, feel free to submit them in the chat or in the Q&A. Uh, let's see. I'm scrolling up to make sure I didn't um, miss anything. Yep, yeah, I'm going to drop in. If you don't know who your class support rep is, I'll drop the link in. That form is going to be like the quickest path to find the person who can best support you in your program. They'll follow back up with you. Um, oh, so if you're out words. <laughs> Thanks everyone. If, and if, if you're out West, I am possibly your point of contact. I would love to just chat, introduce yourselves. Um, so if you're in one of our Western states, please reach out. Just would love to say hi. <laughs> yeah thank you all for joining we'll give it like one or two more minutes if you want to stick around and just ask questions of me and Aaron both we'll be here for another minute but if not have a lovely day Ooh, other languages the parent trainings Aaron do you know about meaningful interactions at home being offered in other languages it's in English and Spanish um what I can also say is if you have <laughs> particular language besides English and Spanish that is kind of predominant. Um, if you can provide a translator, we can make that happen. It's a little bit more challenging, but we have the materials specifically in English and in Spanish. Yes. See, another question, is class qualified for hours in a workforce registry? Really depends on your state. So Maria, chat in and let us know what state you're from. We it depends on the state as well as what the training is, but many of our trainings are um, CE, they provide CEUs, so they're through ISET. Um, we have some, some of them in various state workforce registries, depending on the state and the training. Yes. To choose. Yep. Got the another participants will receive the... Um, the recording. If you want more information about the CDA renewal, you can reach out to your rep. Uh, but the renewal, great thing about our renewal is that we're revamping it every three years since you have to renew your CDA every three years so that you can keep coming back and having uh, new material every time you need to recertify. Oh, you have a wonderful rest of your day as well. <laughs> This is the nicest group of <laughs> participants. I love it. I feel like I'm just being hyped oh, up the whole time. Your 3 p.m. was not our 3 p.m. You're going to get a recording. It's okay, Maria. You'll get it. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll send you a recording. You. <laughs> um, no certificate for this one, as this is considered more of a product demo. But again, we'll, we will send the slides as well. <clears throat> I also had a question about another webinar that we had previously um, and so you can find all of our webinars on demand. So many of them feature Erin. So if you're just looking to watch more of Erin, you can find her on those <laughs> webinars. But there's a breadth of all sorts of information if you want more about coaching or more about teaching. Um, we've got a lot of stuff there on that link. Um, let's see. In the email tomorrow, you will receive, uh, it'll have the link to my LinkedIn. Please add me. I love yeah. to connect with folks. 
Totally. And let us know if you're going to come go into any conferences. We hope to see you all out in the field. Yeah, we have some folks attending Build soon. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, on demand, is it through an email request or a website? You can reach out to us and we can support you with it. You can also go onto our website and access our CDA. Whether it's on demand or facilitated, you can purchase it directly through the website. On demand is that you can just kind of start whenever you want. There's not a cohort that you need to wait to be a part of a specific start date. Or if you mean on demand for the webinars, those are free. Oh. You can watch the recording. Oh, I was just still on CDA mode because there were It questions. might be. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, does Teach Down and DCF Training collaborate having your CEU? I don't know that answer, June, but I would say follow up with your class support rep because they will have a lot more context for your region. Um, and Rebecca, I see your Q&A when you signed up, you were supposed to receive the recording. Um, we'll, we'll send it out tomorrow, or if you mean the one from last week, sometimes that happens if there's like an email bounce, it might've gone to your spam. I'm sorry about that. But again, if you go to the resources tab and then um, you can find all of our webinars there. So I'll post the link for you. I'm sorry that you didn't receive it. All right. Thank you all for sticking around. There's still 200 people here. I love it. <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. And thanks for interacting with us. And we hope to see you around. Thank all you. Right. Y'all have a good Bye. one. The slide. This, oh, I'm still on here. The slides, Rebecca, will be in the email. And they're also, if you're looking for the on demand, um, they are, when you go to the, the page on the resources, the slides will be there as well. All right.